Jeff Goblin is a kid car. It's a kid car you built at home. Uh, use a Chevy Cobalt uh, as the donor car. You rip the parts out of it, engine, transmission, uh, some brake components, and then put it into a kit that Gift Goblin sells you. Uh, they're located in Dallas. Um, it's pretty cool. It comes in three stages. First stage is the chassis, and stage two and three are supporting pieces for uh, the kit car. Overall, it's a pretty complicated process. There are build guides, but um, a lot of it is just you kind of having to figure things out as you go. You gotta keep in mind, it was it's me, my brother, and my dad, right? And, you know, we've worked on cars, we've done trucks, suspension. I had a Jeep Wrangler when I turned 16, and dad and I worked on that. Uh, we installed new fenders on it. Um, simple things, very simple things. And I think we built a little bit of confidence in ourselves and our ability um, through working on uh, the Chrysler Conquest, um, working on uh, Owen's truck, uh, dad's old GTR, but um, we were totally underprepared, <laughs> underprepared and it was just like this extremely large like knowledge gap that going into it, you know, I thought like, okay, you know, it's gonna be hard, but you know, there's videos and stuff, you're gonna figure it out. It was a huge learning curve getting, uh, you know, understanding how hard to torque things, you know, oh, you can't hammer this, you can't hammer that. Um, this needs to be lined up like this. We had no idea about the brake system and how important it was to make sure that was sealed up. Uh, I, I cranked off two bolts on the brake booster, you know, so just <laughs> really learning as we go. And you know, after I think like two weeks of just saying like, hey, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. Let's put down the deposit. Finally, I convinced him, and I remember sitting in our little kitchenette uh, living room. I had my MacBook out, and we're going through. You select like you what type of specs you want to do, stuff like that. So the hood, the length, and finally get to the bottom. It's like this $700 deposit, and we're there. And I'm like, okay, we're gonna do this. And finally, my dad says, yeah, let's do it. And so that night. You know, 7.30 at night, we hit the button, we pay now, get the deposit, the email comes in, and then kind of that's when I knew it was getting real. And going off of that, that's when you sort of had to look for the donor. Trying to buy the donor car uh, is an interesting challenge because there are certain specifications you have to find in the car you want. Um, you know, for example, uh, you know, I, we, I know we wanted a car that was um, in somewhat good condition, um, uh, was the supercharged version. Um, of a certain year. Um, and so that was a, a challenge in itself, is just understanding how to find, identify that kind of car uh, and get it shipped uh, to Nashville. We found off of some dealer base in South Florida, a 2007 red Chevy Cobalt SS supercharged. You know, this thing had 110,000 miles. Um, you know, the catalytic converter was broken. That took another like two weeks for them to have it fixed. And then finally the day came we got this super jank shipping company. They shipped it. They parked outside of my high school because it was the only road that was wide enough where we could park. You know, you got this big trailer with all the cars on it. Oh, and here comes, yeah. lowers off this, you know, $3,000 super jank old looking cobalt. And I'm thinking, what are we doing? And finally, we, you know, we get in it, we start driving. It has that smell, of, you know, smokers and, you know, who knows how many people have owned this car. And get it back to here, to the house, that's when we really started the tear down of the donor. Initial tear down, um, way more uh, complicated than I think we expected uh, for taking things apart, as well as understanding what to do with the videos. Like we were watching the videos at first and like it seemed like this was way more than we had like ever done before. The initial teardown was kind of like a wake up call to say like, hey, this is a lot of work. You're gonna have to buy tools or buy parts you never used. We had to buy a engine jack, just things that we didn't have that we had to learn how to use and purchase, um, you know, to get it to enable us to, to 
do the work to get to the point we are now. And going into it, I know we had videos and stuff. You know, DF had posted really, really good videos of explaining really like exactly the steps you need to take to get the car disassembled. And so what we would do is after school or on a Saturday, on a Sunday, we would just go out there and we would, you know, do one video at a time, half a video at a time because they vary in length and finally get to, you know, 10 or 15 videos in and it comes to the point where you're ready to drop the engine. So I was kind of tasked with uh, getting rid of the donor car, and it was hilarious trying to call these wrecker guys, uh, junkyard you know workers, you know, not the kind of guy that really understands what you're trying to explain over the phone. He's just kind of like, "What you got? You know, I, you know, how can I get it?" And you know, kind of trying to explain to him that it had no wheels, it had no engine, it was just the chassis. It was kind of odd. Um, I finally found a guy in Nashville that kind of understood what I was saying. And he sent out a, a dude on a, a flatbed truck that kind of tipped up to come get it. And he, in our driveway, got the car, like got the chassis up on the edge of his flatbed, kind of hanging, because we didn't want to scrape up the driveway. So he like barely got it up there, lifted it up, and then drove out in our street, like out front, and was like in the middle of the street with this car hanging off the, the flatbed by a winch and I'm sitting there at the front window watching like, is this going to work? Um, but that was a challenge in itself. Like you don't, th that's not something you think about when you do this, but you know, we figured it out. We were already taking a trip to visit my sister at Baylor, which you know is in Waco. And we fly into Dallas and then we drive to Waco. It turns out that where DF is located is actually exactly on the route we would take to go to Waco from Dallas anyway. So, you know, we decided, okay, we're gonna call him up. You know, we have a scheduled visit with DF. We're gonna stop at DF on the way back. Um, and we visit around, you know, take us on a ride. Finally, we decided, you know what? It's probably gonna take an extra month if if we want to ship home um, compared to us. It's there, we can see it. We, gotta, we had a picture with our goblin sitting there, ready to be shipped, just waiting on the regional shipment. And it was the timing was kind of messed up with like how long that would take. And like, we were itching to get working on it like immediately. And so dad and I agreed that we were gonna take a U-Haul box truck and drive it back in one go. At the time we were visiting DF Goblin, we were kind of taking our time. Caroline and my mom, my sister and my mom, had to fly back uh, that afternoon. And so we didn't really worry about the timing that much. So when we left DF Goblin, it was like, I don't know, 11 or noon. And we decided to just go all the way through and drop all the way back. And we, were ratchet we ratcheted the, the chassis down in the back of it and got it all, all, all straight. And we got to Memphis at like 9 p.m. And I was like, okay, we're not gonna spend the night in Memphis. We're gonna go all the way through. About like an hour out, his dad was kind of nodding off in the passenger seat. I had my headphones on, blasting dubstep just to get motivated and awake to, to make it all the way. And it turns out I wake up, Dave decided to come all the way home. I look at my window so I can see the driveway and there it is the U-Haul. You know, it's eight in the morning and they're here. So I got home and I was already super impressed because uh, they had already ripped the engine out. Uh, some of the first things I did to kind of get involved with the car was getting rid of the donor car. Um, got rid of that and then the next time I came home was over Thanksgiving and that was like the big push. That was like, you know, we're gonna try to get this thing driving at some point. Um, it, they, Owen and Dad had gotten the engine in. Um, it was 
mounted, um, but uh, you know, wheel hubs were messed up, um, brakes weren't happening. Uh, it was really stood on a lot of pieces. And so to come home and see it with the engine in and like the chats together, it's like, okay, I'm kind of starting to see what this looks like. It's a lot of hard work. Uh, you know, we, we got it roll by the end of the week. So we agreed, uh, Owen and Dad got in it, and I was, I was watching with Mom and Caroline, and they pulled out of our driveway and turned right. <laughs> it's like the but... wheels just go like, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> it's not a line at all. Look at the difference. Now, at the end of our streets, a cul-de-sac, and uh, they were like, hey, turn right, we're gonna test the brakes. There was like a, there was a brake leak, which I was like, we should not be driving this with a brake leak, no parking brake, but whatever. Um, go down the cul-de-sac, go to the end of the road, come back and go in the driveway, super easy. Pull out, driveway, take a right, awesome. Looks super cool, sounds great, loving it. Come back down the street, and then Owen and Dad just blow right by the right by the driveway. I'm like, where are you going? I'm not supposed to do that. There's a video that we took, and it's like we're viewing the thing. And in the video, as they drive by, I'm like, wait, wait, they're not supposed to do that. They're just pull back in. I was all worried about the brakes failing. <laughs>